Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, hosted by me, yours truly, Jeffrey Belomo. I hope you're doing well out there today. I have a very special guest with me today. I'm really looking forward to this one. Just a reminder, remember that you should not take legal advice from this show or any other show for that matter. If you need legal advice, please seek an attorney in the state that you live in who is licensed and who specializes in the area that you are looking for. This educational podcast is for inf information and educational purposes only. This does not co constitute attorney-client privilege. All right, if you need advice and you're in Pennsylvania, if it's regarding estate planning and elder law, we would be honored to work with you. Please give us a call at 717-845-5390 and check us out on the web at www.palomoassociates.com. Awesome. Well, today we have a special guest, and it happens to be my daughter, Deanna. Deanna, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm doing real well. Looking forward to this. My listeners have uh, been requesting some more personal podcasts. So we have a lot of legal technical stuff, as you know. Um, and as the tagline of the show is, all things estate planning and elder law and anything else we want to talk about. So this will fall under the and everything else we want to talk about category. All right, so Deanna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm Deanna. I go to middle school, and I do band. Awesome. And what's your favorite subject? Definitely history. History, very cool. And uh, what do you like to do for fun? Anything? Band. What about beyond band? Beyond band? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. How about scuba diving? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so Deanna's a little humble, and she doesn't like to talk about herself at all, but I will brag. She is a junior master scuba diver. I'll talk about history. We can talk about history in a minute. Okay. But for now, we're going to talk about scuba diving. And that means that she is a rescue diver, and I'll tell a funny story, because I don't know that she'll tell it. But CPR certified. Ooh. Yes, CPR certified. Uh, pediatric and adult with AED, but... The story that I want to tell is when we were getting our rescue diver oh. certifications, <laughs> I tried as well, and I was not able to pass the test. But my 12-year-old daughter at the time, or were you 13? No, I was 12. 12. Uh, <laughs> passed it with no problem. So, you know what? I was able to pass it later. I just had to uh, get my mind around it, and uh, I was cramping up that day. So, <laughs> needless to say, my daughter holds it over my head that she passed and became... A rescue diver before I did, but that's okay. Uh, we're we're both master divers now, and we enjoy uh, diving. I I would like to say together, but I guess we should ask Deanna that question. But Deanna, what's your favorite dive so far that you've done? My favorite dive was, um, it was honestly it was the dive in we did in Disney. In Disney, all right. So what what was the dive Wait, in no, Disney? No, no, it was yeah, a yeah? dive in Georgia Aquarium. Georgia Aquarium. All right. Well, tell. Tell the listeners about uh, Disney and Georgia Aquarium because they are both aquariums and they have a lot of things in common. So tell the listeners about those dives and why that was your favorite. So Disney is a little bit more free reign. You can like you go under and they give you a little tour of the aquarium, which is really, really big. Um, and then they kind of set you free for like a long time, actually. And you can just go up for air if you need it. And then you can just like swim with all the sharks and the fish. Uh, but no dolphins, because dolphins can be a little bit too playful. But um, it's it's super cool. Don't pet the animals, because that's not allowed. Um, but it's so much fun. You can see a bunch of tiger sharks, and uh, there's turtles. I love turtles. Um, and then Georgia's a little bit different. Georgia's a little bit more like you stay with the dive master, who's the person who's, like, certified in, like, leading dives and stuff. And... Um, you have to stay with them the whole time. But Georgia is the only aquarium in the U.S. that has whale sharks, which are the biggest fish in the world. And whale sharks are sharks. They're not whales. Whales is, like, the adjective, like, the descriptive term. They're just so big, they're like whales. But um, they are sharks because they have a um, skeleton made of cartilage. And um, sharks, which means that uh, whale sharks, I don't know how specific it gets, but I know they belong to the, okay, they belong... 
phylum, chordata, maybe? Mr. Tanner might be upset with my science terms, but it was last year we learned. Which basically means that animal has a skeleton made of cartilage, which um, whale sharks belong to that term with, obviously, sharks, which they are. And um, rays and skates, actually. I didn't know what a skate was. I still don't. Um, but, yeah, so there's whale sharks there. There's manta rays. I love manta rays. Manta rays are a way, ray, which means they also belong to the phylum chordata um, because they have a skeleton made of cartilage. Um, and they're super big, and they have these little things in the front of their, like, mouth that you can help them, like, just, like, classify them as. And there are black and white, but when you're classifying animals, you don't want to look at the color of them because they change over time. So usually using color is not a good way to classify animals. It can be, but usually you just want to look at the shape of them because that's always going to be right. I mean, the size might change, obviously. But, um, and obviously, uh, the um, Georgia also has bowmouth guitar fish. They have um, the little sawfish. I believe they have like, a little thing in the front of the mouth that looks like a saw. It's kind of creepy, actually. Um, they have turtles, too. Um, and they, they have so much stuff in Georgia. It's aquarium. It's... It's crazy in Georgia. And they have a shark area, which we did the, the dive to. It was a cage dive. Um, it was a little bit tight in there. But there were a bunch of sharks in there. There were bull sharks. Um, no great white sharks. Because those would be uh, too big to put in a tank. Because they're the uh, biggest sharks in the world currently. But the Megalodon was the biggest shark ever. Um, but the Georgia has so much stuff. And beluga whales are the best part of Georgia. Well, besides the manta rays. Manta rays are great, too. And the whale sharks, obviously. But the beluga whales are, like, the hidden gem. you got to go see the beluga whales because they're so much fun to watch. Awesome. And if you're in, if you're in Disney and you want to see the divers or if you want to dive, where would they go to do that? Yeah, so they would go to Epcot. Okay. And they would go to the Living Seas Aquarium. Or they can just ask someone, like, where's the aquarium? And the cast members will tell you. And, and I, I don't think that they're doing that yet. Am I right? I don't think no, they started it No, it's not it open up. yet. But if you want to, like, see divers, your best bet's probably around 5 o'clock-ish. But just wait there for a little while and go to the biggest section. Just ask where are all the sharks, and they will tell you. Um, the big, It's the biggest tank there. And it's, like, all the way in the back, kind of in the corner. But it's not in the corner. Everyone knows where it is. It's huge. It's, like, two levels. Um, and then, actually, if you go on the on the Finding Nemo ride, which is super fun, and, like, everyone should do it because animals are the best. And when you're leaving the ride, if you look up, there are little portholes, and you can see into the aquarium a little bit. It might look fake, but it's not, because I accidentally stepped on it the one time. So, some people might have gotten a good view of my fin. That's right. And other than aquarium dives, which you've done and you love them, um... What are some of your other favorite dives that you've done? Uh, my favorite ocean dive was, well, I guess there are two, too. Um, my favorite, like, recent ocean dive was the shark dive we did. It was the first shark dive I did, and it was so cool. We dove with nurse sharks and... Reef? Reef sharks? I think yeah. it was reef, right? Caribbean reef sharks? Maybe. I think it was We saw one at the finger ring reefs, but I'm not sure. But, yeah, there were a bunch of sharks. There was, like, 15 in the water, and it was so cool. And also my favorite, my other favorite dive we did was when I was getting my advanced certification. And um, because it was also kind of a little rusty, but it was advanced. And I got a bunch of specialties at that time. Um, that's what led me to get my master on that trip. But during that dive, the first thing that happened was I jumped in the water. And I got stung by like a jellyfish tentacle loose in the water. And that wasn't very fun. But I was okay. I lived. Um... And then we ended up going down, and it was the deepest dive I had ever done. It was like 72 feet. And we ended up seeing a nurse shark, and I actually did touch the nurse shark. And it was super cool. And sharks don't feel like, um, sharks do not feel like dolphins. They're not smooth. They have thermal denticles, which allows them to find their way in the water. Now, they also have, um, ampullae of Lorenzini, which are like little electrical signals, kind of like around their mouth. Um, and all around them, really. And that helps them hunt. And if you are, like, a shark and you're in a reef, you can, like, kind of, like, sense the heartbeat of a fish, which is super cool, which is why they're such good hunters. Wow. And then there's also um, a lateral line, which some fish you can actually see the lateral line. And that helps them. You know when they're fishing, like, the giant clusters, like in Finding Nemo, and they're making, like, little, like, faces and shapes and stuff? The dermal, The lateral line helps the fish not bump into each other. So it keeps them nice and faced apart so they don't run into random things. Because not all fish have good um, sight, like sharks. So when sharks see you and then you hear a shark text, probably because you're either um, on the shore or you're on a uh, little, what is that, surfing board, because you look like different animals. 
And Disney has a good example of that too. If you go into the little like kitty area, these kitty areas are great. They have good videos. Bless you. Um, and <laughs> bless you. Um, <laughs> bless you. And sharks are like so great, but they don't have very good vision. So if you're on the shore, um, I don't swim near a. Uh, a pier? A pier, because it's where people throw buddy fish in, and sharks usually go there to hunt, obviously. So when you're splashing around, they sense that as a hurt animal. So they go, and they do a test bite. You rarely hear about sharks eating animals, because they just don't. That's not, they don't want you. They want fish. You're and just not good for them, okay? That's right. That, they're not into you, right? Yeah. So, that's what the National, the <laughs> Museum of National, what, the Museum of National Treasure, yeah. They're just not that into you. That's which right. Which is true. That's true. And... As a as a diver, are are you were you nervous when you were on that dive in the Bahamas with the sharks? No, because sharks were nice. Right, and it's more at the shore, right, or at the at the mm-hmm. the or edge surfing. there where you're splashing around or surfing because it looks like a fish, right? Yeah. No. Also, if I was on a boat and I saw a shark, I wouldn't go swimming with them on the surface. Very good. Sharks aren't like playful. Don't go playing with them like dolphins. But don't go playing with dolphins either because they're gonna be kind of crazy. That's right. That's right. So the have a mind of their own. The shark dive we went on was in the Bahamas, and yeah. the other dive that she referenced, uh, where we saw the ray and the shark, and she was petting the nurse shark, that was in uh, Key West, in Key Largo, actually. Key Largo. I'm sorry. It was in the Keys. It was in Key Largo. So, well, very cool. And um, Jellyfish oh. are the predators of the sea. They're what you really need to watch for. Now, I, I remember doing a pre-search on the box jellyfish, and they're the most, like, vet, like, Okay, now there's a difference. Poison and venom are like one is land, one is sea. I don't remember the difference. But jellyfish are the most like venomous slash poisonous like animal in the entire world, or at least in the ocean. I've been exaggerating that. Uh-huh. But they hunt their prey by stinging their prey with um, nematocysts, which also like like um, anemone have, um, and really any like stinging coral, like fire coral. And they sting their prey and they shut down the organs of the prey like one by one. It's really like painful death box jellyfish are evil really but jellyfish just not good stay away from them because they are scary and getting stung by jellyfish is not fun I, I, but if you I do agree. get stung by jellyfish use cream like made for jellyfish thingies um and just stay away from them because they're not friendly yeah i agree they have no <laughs> no moral compass that's right. looking for food like all animals are of course but that's right jellyfish are what you really gotta watch for and do you plan to continue on in your scuba diving adventures? Yeah, totally. Awesome. And you're currently, what, a junior master diver? Yeah. And when you turn, I believe it's, what, 15? Uh, they're in the process of making, like, a junior dive master. But currently, it's when you turn 18, you can be a dive master, which means you can get paid for leading people on divers, which is super cool. That's awesome. Very cool. Anything else you want to share about your scuba diving experiences? No, but jellyfish are Medusa. They have, like, pieces of bells at the top of them, not the bottom. And I remember if it's, like... Medusa and Greek mythology is like hair. Woo. Um, there's something else too. It's like it's like coral, like the opposite, I think. But yeah. Well, that's awesome. Very cool. And just a shout out on my next podcast, we are going to be having Chelsea Richardson, who is the uh, the instructional dive master. I'm not sure if that's the right title, but uh, from uh, South Carolina, and that is actually who was with us in the Keys. Um, and got both of us actually our master diver certifications and every certification before well, and after that <laughs> that is true that is true and she's going to be on our next podcast to talk about scuba diving some of the favorite places in the world that she's dove if you're someone interested in diving how would you go about uh getting certified and what does that mean and what are some of the different uh levels that you can do in diving so if you're listening to this podcast and you're enjoying it Check us out on the next Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show to hear more about scuba diving with instructor Chelsea Richardson. So a shout out for Chelsea and Express Water Sports in South Carolina in Myrtle Beach. We uh, certainly love them and enjoy diving with them and the instruction that she's provided. So I'm really excited about that podcast and maybe Deanna will uh, make a guest appearance with me tomorrow night as we uh, do the next uh, podcast for next week on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show. So, Deanna, um, Wait, you, you should be the, the guy on the toy commercials that's like, better is not sold separately. All I know is sold separately. Blah, 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 blah. I would like that. That would be fun. I, you sound a little bit too happy for that, though. Uh, but I'm always happy, so you can't, <laughs> you, you can't change who you are, right? The so, people on that are like, yeah. better is sold separately. I'm not included. Goodbye. <laughs> 
So you mentioned earlier that you like to uh, you like the band. So what do you play in the band? Yeah, I play the flute in band, and I'm trying to convince Mrs. Brew to let me play the piccolo for spring. Um, oh. I've had piccolo for a year now, and I think I'm ready to play in the band. There um, you go. And I also want to conduct a piece in the spring. Uh, but I really want to be the drum major in the high school band, and my goal is to be drum major in my sophomore year. Now, old and might end up regretting the statement and be like, no, Diana, you didn't do that, Diana. But I'm going to hope I am, because I really want to be a drum major. Um, so I'm hope I, I really, well, really want to conduct in spring. And, um, yeah, I play the flute, and I attempted bassoon for like a week, but that didn't go so well. Yeah, that's a tough one. So I stick to flute. <laughs> and it, and uh, you're also in the uh, York Junior Symphony. Yeah, I'm in the symphony, and I'm in the wind ensemble, and then I'm also in, well, I was in orchestra in spring of last year, which is like the small, it's like YJSO, but like for school, and a couple band kids do that, and then, um, that's all for now. I hope I do, I want to do more later, obviously, but like, I don't, shouldn't say it now, because I'm going to jinx myself, so, no jinxing, no j- but I also do Penny Whistle for Mr. Kalazak for winter, I actually haven't gone to the string ensemble rehearsals yet, but I'm going to, so... I guess I currently play the flute, the piccolo, and the penny whistle. Very cool. Very D cool. D penny whistle. Oh, is that a, there's different penny there's whistles? There's like three main keys. There's a G key, there's a D key, and there's a C key. Now, D has the same fingerings, but because the key and the, the piece is in a G major, well, it can be in my just a little bit, which means it has one sharp, F sharp, and the D key has an F sharp and a C sharp in its key it's made for, because penny whistles can't play in multiple keys. You have to change the fingering a little bit, so the C is actually half covered, like Claire and I do that a lot. Flutes don't do that. We just touch our holes and hope it works. Um, but because there's no pinky key or thumb key made on a piccolo, a penny also because it was made so long ago, there's you have to like half cover the hole because C is kind of weird. But it's super fun, and I like it. Very and Mr. Cool. Kalazak is great. That's awesome. I like watching him conduct. He's funny. That's awesome. So uh, at this point, you're in eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, any ideas of what you want to go to college for? Is this a leading question? Mm-mm. No, not at all. Okay. Um, I want to go to college and I want to be a business major and minor in communications or poli science, but probably more communications. Um, I want to take a theology class. I feel like that would be super cool. Sweet. Anyway, um, I want to go to law school and then I want to be a lawyer. Very cool. This was a leading question. No, it was not. I, just, I think it was. I only asked about college. I did not ask about okay. beyond college. So okay. it was not a leading question. So you kind of didn't answer that. But our listeners don't. I know answers to all the questions I'm asking you tonight. I'm asking for my <laughs> listeners so that they get to hear your You knew jellyfish opinion. were medusas? I did not. You learned something new there. I did learn something new. <laughs> this is a great podcast. I'm learning yeah. all kinds of new stuff. So very cool. So maybe maybe law school. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. That would be fun. That would be fun. All my, my clients are going, oh, great. We'll have content, you know. Continuity with Diana, so that would be awesome. If you choose not yeah. to, that's okay. You do whatever you want. If I succeed in law school, maybe I'll make it this far. <laughs> yep, no doubt, no doubt. So, um, what other, any other subjects you like? Anything else you like to do? History. I love history. history. What's your favorite part of history so far? Like ever or like this year? Um, this year. This year, we're currently learning about the road to the American Revolution. And we just took our test today, and we need to get my grade back. Um, so maybe I'll know by the end of this week. We should do a podcast next later this week, and I'll like <laughs> know what I got. So I won't be a little, I won't be scared. But we took our test today on the Road to Revolution, like the Boston Tea Party and the Boston Massacre, and all the acts passed, and like Paul Revere's Midnight Ride. But it's time we go to with friends. There were three of them who went on the ride, and the goals of that ride were to m- gather the Minutemen, with, who were like people who were like were ready to fight, you know? Whoa. Um, to warn the people that the British were coming, one if by land, two if by sea, by sea, which is what they ended up having to do, two lights. And then there was also, they wanted to warn um, John Hancock, who was known um, for his signature, actually, and Samuel Adams, the leader of the Sons of Liberty. Um, the Sons of Liberty were a group who, like, caused havoc in the colonies. But um, he needed to warn those two because they organized the Boston Tea Party. And the British were coming and looking for them. Um, he wanted to warn them they were looking for them and that they should go hide. And um, get their sons out of there because they, they were going to get captured. Which, actually, Paul ended up getting captured halfway through. And his buddies ended up finishing the ride. And one of them had to walk from, like, basically Boston to where, like, Con- Lexington, I think. Um, long walk. And I'm surprised he did it. But he did. And the ride succeeded. And the Brit- the uh, sorry, the Patriots um, slash the colonists ended up winning the Battle of Lexington and Concord. 
And um, it was a success. Obviously, then, you know, like, the winter is in George Washington. But George Washington was actually a red coat in the French and Indian War, which is, like, the war right before the French and Indian War. It was against the – it was the English, the French, and the Native Americans. And they were all fighting for land in the Ohio River Valley. And George Washington was actually fighting for the the co- the, the, the red coats. He was a red coat. He was a British. He considered himself British. And – in this, he was like like kind of a commander chief ish kind of, and uh, he was a British, and then eventually he would be the leader of the Continental Army, fighting what he fought against. So some could argue that George Washington, the the British really made the person who ended up destroying them, which is kind of crazy to think about. But he fought for the British, which is kind of crazy to think about. But George Washington did some some cool things and some bad things, but he learned a lot in the French Indian War, which is why he was such a good leader in the in the American Revolution because he learned so much in that war and he learned stuff <laughs> very cool we didn't go into much detail as you can see so wait a minute you just burst my bubble yeah it, paul revere actually wasn't the one who warned them no he was so but he got captured halfway through the ride right so he wasn't the one that actually got there the oh, other no, guy there's a was. lot of misinformation in paul revere's night ride like everything you know is probably fake oh he didn't go around screaming the british are coming no, the last thing you want to do with British regulars walking around, British regulars, people who were like regularly controlling the colony, and that was, um, and people who housed them were actually the colonists. They were forced to because of the quartering acts, which basically made them, they were forced to house British soldiers and pay for their housing, and they weren't very nice to them. But um, the British regulars were walking around being like, who's out tonight, huh? And Paul Revere went around on his horsey, and he was like, he told anyone who was near, he's like, hey, tell the people the British are coming. Go tell your friends. Bye bye, bro. Um, and he went around really quietly, just telling people to tell their friends because he didn't want to be like, woo! But then the British regulars would be like, oh no, let's go battle. Hawaii. Um, Sam Adams was actually the second cousin of John Adams, the second president of the United States. Lots of second son family, I guess. Um, and he was also not a very good president. He didn't do much. I mean, he had very high, like, expectations after George Washington, like, arguably one of the best presidents ever. I mean, he he did, he made mistakes, like everyone does, but he was a pretty good president. I mean, he was the first president, so people actually wanted him to end up running for a third term, but he said, no, I don't want to. I don't want to create the same thing we all fought for to get out of, a monarchy. And that's what people kind of wanted, because he was so good. But as you know, not everyone in a monarchy is so good. <laughs> So, he was the first time the transfer of power between him and John Adams was the first time in history that, that historians know of a tr- peaceful transfer of power between two men who were unrelated, and one didn't be like, off with their head, hoya! No, I'm the king. Very interesting. Yeah, nice. it was super cool. That's awesome. So, just out of curiosity, Yeah. so I'm an estate planning and elder law attorney. What does that mean to you? You totally changed the subject. I know. I was time to move on. <laughs> Time to move on. Yeah, so we're running out of time, and I want to get this question in before we But we can talk about Rome end. and stuff. We have like three more minutes, Dad. We can talk about Rome. Well, maybe we'll have another podcast. <laughs> okay. You know, we can let you talk all day long if you want. Okay. Oh, elder law? Yeah, estate okay. planning and elder law. I'm just curious. What does it mean? So, estate planning and elder law is like a couple things. Estate planning and like elder law is like an umbrella term for like what happens to you when you're living and when you die. So, uh, what Jeffrey Bob here does is he makes wills for people which, like, protects their stuff. Um, so, like, in the dramatic soap operas, when people are like, I'm cutting you out of my will, Bob. Bob is upset, but he realizes he made a mistake and should probably apologize to his friend. He's now he's cut out of the will. So the will is what happens to all your stuff when you die, like your money and your house and stuff, and you decide who it goes to. And then... Um, he also does, like, trust, which are, like, protect a lot of money. And it's, like, more protection. But they take a long time to make. So you got to – you pay for what the time it takes to get. That's and right. then there's also probate, which is what happens to your money when you die. So, like, they kind of carry out the will and move all your money. Now, everyone gets a will when they turn 18. It's an automatic government-certified thingy-mabob. And it's basic. And if you want to, like – be fancy or bougie or something <laughs> you want to be bougie you go to jeff there you go there you have it and just to <laughs> clarify if you don't have a will the state does have one for you and it's called intestate succession it's okay 
Yep, and we did talk about it on another podcast, so check us out on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, where we discuss all things estate planning and elder law and anything else we want to talk about. So we hope you enjoyed this podcast today. It's very fun for me to do a podcast with my daughter, Deanna. It's over? It's over. Wait, all we talked about was the American Revolution and, like, scuba dive and animals. I know, and it's 30 minutes, so we're just about ready to wrap it up here. It's not 30 minutes. 25 more minutes. It is. It's a 25 to 26-minute show. So I promise to have Deanna back on another podcast so that we can talk more about the American Revolution Maybe and the fall of Rome, the fall of Rome, feudalism, and the Middle Ages, and the Black Plague. Well, there's all kinds of stuff, so we'll get her back on in a podcast. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed the show, and remember, do not take any legal advice from this show or any other show for that matter. If you're looking for legal advice, please contact an attorney licensed in the state that you live in and specializes in the area that you're looking for. If you're in the state of Pennsylvania and you're looking for an estate planning elder law attorney, we would be honored to work with you and your family. You can check us out on the web at www.belomoassociates.com or give us a call, 717-845-5390. We offer weekly workshops, estate planning, crisis planning, probate administration, trust administration, and special needs planning. Wait, I forgot about Medicaid. And, <laughs> no! And asset protection in Medicaid. So, very good. We'll, we'll definitely have Deanna back on the podcast. This was a lot of fun for me. We hope you enjoyed it as well. We'll catch you on the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in. You say associates.